Welcome back everyone to this fifth video on the finite element analysis of beams. In the previous video, we uh, showed how we assemble the elements uh, into a single uh, set of equations. Uh, and here we, uh, in this video, we will show you how to apply the boundary conditions to those uh, set of equations. Uh, first, uh, we have to define boundary conditions. Uh, I mean, uh, I cannot just say for any boundary conditions. So I'll start with a very simple case of the cantilever beam. As you may know, a cantilever beam is a beam that's fixed from one side. When I say fixed uh, from one side, I mean that the uh, lateral deflection is constrained. It cannot move vertically. And the rotation as well is constrained. Uh, constraint means that it can take any value, but this value will be fixed. For us, this will mean that it has a value of zero. That's just for simplicity. Of course, we can uh, use uh, given values, but uh, that will be uh, uh, the subject of another video later. However, for now, we will talk about here having v equals to zero and v prime, the slope equals to zero at node number one. Other than that, all the nodes are free to move uh, according to what uh, the physics of the problem will uh, imply. So what we have here is the set of equations, the six by six uh, set of equations. But now we know that those two values are equal to zero as a given boundary condition. So uh, all the two columns here of the stiffness matrix will be multiplied by zero. Using them or not using them will not make any difference because now they are multiplied by zero. So eliminating those two columns uh, will uh, not affect our problem. On the other hand, uh, we have P1 and M1 here. Let's recall it from the sketch. P1 and M1 is the lateral force and the, let, uh, and the moment at node one. These are the reactions of the support. Uh, I don't know the reactions of the support. This is part of the solution, or actually what we will call later the secondary part of the solution. Anyway, so uh, I don't know P1 and M1. Uh, I can separate now those six equations into a set of two. Two equations, including P1 and M1, and four equations, uh, including the four unknown dis, uh, di displacements uh, and associated with the known forces. So I'll create uh, this the primary set of equation, the four equations of four unknowns. This is a solvable set of equation, inverting this matrix and multiplying it by the right hand side. I'm going to get the values of V, while the secondary or the auxiliary set of equations will be multiplying the other four, uh, sorry, the other two uh, rows uh, by the uh, vector. Remember here, I don't need to have these two columns. They are here by mistake. I'm sorry for that. Uh, multiplying those two uh, rows by the unknown, uh, sorry, the now known, after solving the first set, the primary set, I know these. So I'll just then uh, subtract F11 and F12 from what I get to get P1 and M1 as the reaction forces that are applied by the uh, support. OK, uh, let's just have a look on another case. Of course, we can create so many cases, but I'm just here going to illustrate two cases. The cantilever beam, which we, we, which we just saw, and the simply supported beam. A simply supported beam is a widely used structure. Uh, it means that the beam uh, is constrained from two points, uh, constrained from lateral motion. Uh, it, uh, we, we don't really focus much on the longitudinal motion. However, strictly speaking, uh, it can, uh, node three can move in the x direction. Anyway, so what we have here now is that, uh, sorry, we have, uh, let's go back. Uh, V1 and V3 are equal to zero. There is no lateral motion here, but they can rotate 
freely. Those two nodes can rotate freely. One node two can move and rotate, and that's going to be a part of the solution. <coughs> so what do I get here? I get uh, those two uh, values are set to zero, creating those two unknowns. Uh, sorry, those two equations: the first and the fifth. The one before the last. Remember here, we start by counting the uh, deflection, then the slope. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So for uh, for the last node, the uh, the degree of freedom that's constrained is the one before the last. Okay. Anyway, now so now we get the uh, primary set of equations by removing. Uh, v1 and v3, uh, and the uh, secondary or the auxiliary set of equations uh, will contain p1 and p3, which are the reaction forces, just like what we had in the cantilever beam, the reaction forces of the two supports, the one at node 1 and the other on node uh, 3. Now we are ready to solve by inverting this uh, matrix, multiplying it by the right-hand side, to get the Vs or the unknown degrees of freedom, then use these unknown degrees of freedom into the secondary equations or the auxiliary set of equations to get the unknown reaction forces. Okay, so uh, now that we have seen uh, two cases, uh, let's uh, go next uh, in the next video and uh, see how we can write down, or actually I will not uh, rewrite it, I will just explain it and you can download it and play around with it. Uh, a, a program uh, using Octave, which is like mathematic, uh, like um, MATLAB and FreeMath. Uh, the code uh, um, can be uh, used to find the deflections of beam given uh, the uh, loads. So see you next video.